Hello, welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto studios for the CUBE. We've got a great conversation here on cloud cost optimization, FinOps, really important topic on the future of cloud management. We're here featuring NOps with the founder and CTO, CEO, JT Geary, thanks for coming on today. CEO, thanks for coming on. Hey, hey John, thank, thanks for having me. Good to see you again. So future cloud management is the topic. You guys were on the showcase before, Adam was on the startup showcase. The category just exploded. FinOps is huge. Everyone's talking about FinOps, not FinTech, FinOps, that's cloud costs. Everyone's right size and the cloud computing is going next gen. You're seeing the future of AI expanding, more apps are coming. It's not like it's going away, but people are tail tuning their clouds. You guys are, are catching the tailwind of this trend. Um, Let's start by giving the audience an overview of what you guys do and your capabilities in managing infrastructure at scale. Yeah, absolutely. So NOPS is a FinOps platform. We focus on automation. Uh, John, I'm pretty sure you hear that often. One of the hardest thing to do in, in FinOps is like, how do you make it easy so engineers take action? So our focus is on automation. Uh, we have a unique pricing model. The platform is completely free. Uh, like showbacks, chargeback, you know, all that functionality that is just included part of the platform. And uh, customers only pay if we save them money. So we just take a percentage of the, of the savings. So that's the model that's like resonating really well because it allows us to, you know, focus on outcomes, focus on optimizing the cost for our customers. Uh, one of the things you mentioned, this is like the, like the, you know, this is the thing that's top of people's mind right now. And uh, the reason is because, you know, because the state of the economy, right? In last two, three years, it actually, maybe it didn't matter, you know, if the spend was going up because stock was also going up, the revenue was also going up. Uh, now all of a sudden there's this microeconomic, you know, which is really impacting people to take a step back and see, you know, how can they optimize their cloud spend? Yeah, and I think the, the so-called recession that people are seeing in the tech market is get to profitability or be more profitable. And I think that is turning into knobs. So at least the cube we've been reporting, as you know, uh, cloud growth is kind of slowed down, but it's still growing, right? And you got the next gen cloud with AI out, with AI coming around the corner, you're seeing people investing more in this kind of the next gen cloud, but they're reining in their current cloud. I call it, you gotta, it's like leaving the lights on. You don't want to leave your lights on in your house before you go to bed. You're going to turn everything off or optimize it so that it's, it's all policy based. This is the focus, I have to, and this is what they're talking about. This is where the action is, because they're squeezing more profit out of their operations because the cloud's elastic. That's the best yes. part about it. That, that was the whole idea, right? One of the things actually we do is, you know, we look at, all the dev environments and lab environments and we show developers pattern, right? You know, you only need this for Monday to Friday or you need it for only a few days a week. And uh, and we, you know, provide this one click experience so they actually could pause these resources. And, and in some cases they're able to save, uh, in many cases they're able to save a lot of money. And again, John, this is where, this is what cloud was originally intended for, right? But all of a sudden, you know, people uh, maybe get comfortable, you know, they, developers have other priorities, right? They have focus to release new features, more revenue generating, um, you know, work and then optimizing costs, right? So this is where like someone like NOPS could come in and help to optimize the cost. But you're right, you know, the whole idea of cloud was you scale up and down based on the need. And uh, somehow, you know, we, you know, there's not a lot of people who practice that. And, uh, and when you show the data uh, to the developers and when you provide like a one click experience, we do see people actually take action and they actually end up taking, saving a lot of money uh, on their dev environments, on the on their lab environments, for example. You know, I read a survey, I can't remember who was the author or what the actual numbers were, but it was pretty high percentage of developers were leaving services on that were not being used or idle. So there's a lot of idle capacity and or services that are being left on. Now the nuanced point here I want to get your thoughts on is because is that AWS in particular and all the hyperscalers, they're adding more services all the time. So it's easier to get, I won't say lost in the catalog of services, but like when you're slinging code as a, as a developer, 
you can sometimes leave services on if you get to turn them off, right? So policy. So this is where the efficiency comes. This is where I think FinOps and like the DevSecOps environments are, are really seeing that day two operational thing. What are some of the areas that you guys work with? How do you go in and explain the value proposition? What's the pitch to the developers? How easy to get into it? And what's the low hanging fruit savings? And then where's the real action? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I, I think, you know, there's this uh, lot of sort of pressure on engineers to reduce, uh, you know, cloud cost in general. But, you know, John, you have to realize that engineers were never trained <laughs> to optimize cloud spend, right? They were trained to solve like business problem, reliability, performance, right? This is like a new sort of problem that we're trying to solve and put more responsibility on them, right? Again, I think once you provide them tooling where, you know, cost optimization is just as easy as provisioning resources, we do see, you know, uh, engineers taking action. So, you know, how we're able to like kind of have great impact is two ways. Number one, uh, what we do is we make sure that customers are paying less for what they have provisioned. So when they provision resources, we are automatically like making the right commitments. And if as they downscale or upscale, we're actually adjusting their commitments. And that John could be a full-time job, right? Again, engineers are good at building stuff. Maybe they're not good at understanding AWS pricing plan. So our idea is to free them up so they don't have to manage these commitments on day-to-day -day basis. The second thing is after you're paying less, can you use less, right? Are there resources that you don't need? And this is where we you know, provide automation to find resources. Again, you know, the future of cloud management is AI and automation, right? So far, the cloud management has been like, here's a recommendation, take action. No one does it, right? If we keep doing things like that, I don't think we're going anywhere. So the whole idea of NOPS is we actually take actions because honestly, this is how we get paid. You know, we get, we only take percentage of the savings. So our motto is pay less. And then, you know, we constantly provide recommendations where customers could easily take action and, you know, they consume less, they use less, and that's how they're able to optimize their overall, you know, cloud spend. Okay, so don't bury the lead story there. You just kind of swung by that little statement of you don't get paid <laughs> until you get, they get savings. Is that true? There's no, is there a retainer at all? Or is there any upfront or is it all on the back end with the customer? You're aligning with their savings. Is that, take a minute to explain that, that key piece there. It's all on based on the impact. So we take percentage of the savings. If we're optimizing your commitments, then we take savings compared to the on-demand. And if we're pausing your resources, you know, we're taking percentage of the amount of money we save. And if we, you know, run your workloads on spot, we obviously take a percentage of the savings compared to on-demand. Uh, it's a powerful model, John, and you know we have a lot of happy customers. Again, you know what it really does it drives focus on our end on one thing. One thing is like how can we optimize you know costs for our customers, and uh, you know and I do believe that is the future of cloud management. I do believe this is how you know we can bring some uh, you know some automation and uh, and and deliver bigger impact in cost optimization on cloud yeah i just read a survey and we've actually pulled some of our cube alumni database um, on this question how many times has a devops engineer been called into the office of a executive about costs and 60% have been pulled in okay so that's one the other thing that you brought up is interesting about the DevOps developer is that if you look at security shift left, that trend is about guardrails and security. Here, it's the same thing. The developers want to have be operationally covered. So it's the same concept that shifting left is for security. You're doing for operations and cloud management, right? And that's kind of the same concept, right? That's right. So, you know, we have to provide an experience to developers. So, we get closer to how they work, right? So how how do developers work? Most of their time is spent writing code, you know, reviewing pull requests. So at NOPS, we do send pull requests and with, you know, cost optimization opportunities. So it's very, very easy for developers to kind of accept those recommendations. Yeah. 
if we don't do that, yeah, it is it is hard, you know, to kind of meet where developers are actually, you know, spending most of their time. Uh, <laughs> so we will see a lot of that yeah. happening over, you know, next hopefully five years. There will be a lot more tooling, and that's where we focus on. Like, how can we make it easy for developers to just take action with one click? As I've said, uh, at least in KubeCon and many years on theCUBE, developers are going to drive the standards and try to change. You see it happening in real time. They adopt a, a tool or platform, it drives in the standard, no matter what the feature is. If it drives it, it drives it. I, I can see the advantage you guys have, um, developers adopting this, no risk, almost no risk. But at some point you have to sit down with the organization and say, here's how we're going to benchmark how we get paid. I'm sure they probably have some blaring problems. Could you give some examples of how you guys help do this with organizations and tie that to Amazon's best practices and benefits that they have. Uh, how do you, how does that all work? Take us through how the sausage is made. Yeah, many of our customers were actually saving them like 20 to 30% of their cloud spend. Uh, one of the things that we realized, John, once you free developers up, you know, as you mentioned, there's 60% of the time they're getting called in to optimize the cost. Um, and normally what happens if, you know, CTOs like let's reduce costs, you bring in a developer, developers spend some time Googling and in addition to whatever else they're doing, right? And that's, that's how, there's like one more thing they have to work on now, right? What we notice when people are leveraging NOPS, you know, we're able to reduce like in many cases up to 50% of their cloud costs and depending on how optimized they were before we got in. And all of a sudden they don't have to think about this at all. This is totally on autopilot. You know, we're constantly reaching out on resources that could be paused. We are maximizing their RI coverage. We're finding resources that could be run on spot and make it easy for them to move those workloads on spot. And all of a sudden this is on autopilot, you know? And now they can focus their energy on building, you know, stuff and, you know, <laughs> focus on revenue yeah. generating activities pretty much. I'm sure this is a fun model. You you optimize someone to a nice equilibrium. It's like, okay, you can't squeeze any more profit out of that, but the, it's still growing their cloud over here. You can just point the software over there. So great stuff. My final question for you is really more about, you know, this is a great solution. It's in line with what people are doing. It's certainly relevant and very cool right now to be turn those knobs to drive more profit, more cash flow, and also take your developers off the mundane tasks and have them coding. Critical. I mean, this is like top of the top of the mind. How do organizations who are starting their fin ops journey, so to speak, um, what guidance can you provide? How do they get started with n ops? What benefits? What will they see out of the gate? Take us through that uh, onboarding uh, or prospect watching, thinking, hey, you know what? This is exactly my board conversation, my executive meetings, my team meetings are talking about this. Let's jump in and do some NOPS. What's the story? Yeah, the, the first step is, you know, if you sign up for our free platform, we can uh, look at your cloud data and kind of show you how we can save you money. By the way, John, we process like close to billion dollars in cloud spend. So this is all we do every day. So we're really good at figuring out ways to optimize you know, cloud spend for customers. Uh, step one, where where I see a lot of success, once they see the data uh, in NOPS, we built a lot of functionality around, like how do you build showbacks? How do you distribute costs around, you know, across multiple teams and business units? Uh, we leverage machine learning for that. And, uh, you know, most of the time, I, what I see, like, customers don't even have that kind of understanding. So once they do this like showbacks and cost allocation, then they develop this baseline. And then we, on top of that, we show, you know, what are the areas where we can, you know, optimize the spend for the customers. And normally it's one click where we can say, you know, just click here and we can literally save you, you know, $5,000 in month of May and maybe $20,000 next month, right? It's, it literally requires zero engineering effort. <laughs> and we do this every week, you know, we're constantly sending like new recommendations and customers just have to do like one click to implement those. In many cases, you know, if once you set policies, we take actions automatically. So it's, it's really as simple as that. And I just feel like there's nothing to lose here. You know, just- uh, Hey JT, just, you're making yeah. people's lives easier, more productive, and you're giving them cash. <laughs> there you go. Right to the bottom line. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they got nothing to lose. Sign up, you know, I'm pretty sure we can save you some money. I definitely, definitely love your business model. I mean, Phenom, I've always been a big fan and Finos more than ever is going to be continually be tuning in. Final question for you while we got you here. Obviously AI is a big part of the conversation in that same survey, 55% are using AI today, just starting to put in place, you know, baby steps to get using AI with guardrails in ops. You're, you're focused right now with AI, what's your view? Yeah, that's, that's what we do, what we do, right? We're like, rather than managing commitments on spreadsheets, we have a model that automatically learns, you know, how we can maximize uh, the commitments for customers. We find resources, patterns, depending on that, we, the, the model adopts to your workloads. And then we that we make those recommendations. And obviously we use AWS event bridge to take action. Um, but yeah, there's we cannot do what we are doing without AI and machine learning, John. <laughs> it's like <laughs> like you know, I was just talking to one of our developers, like we we process like 20 trillion dollars uh AWS billing rows at like every hour. Uh, so there's no one like, you know, there's no like a single person sitting there and making these decisions, you know? I mean, that's <laughs> there's no way to do that, right? <laughs> AD, I'd be smiling if I was you too. What a great business model. And again, you got th that data. And again, the data is a treasure trove too. That's going to give you more insights and signaling. Yes. Yeah. And singular focus, right? Like how do we use this data to optimize customer spend? Yeah. Because if we're able to do that, then we, we get paid. So we're sing like we're focused on that. This is an example of the future of the cloud. It's a super application, great in line with developers. This is the future. JT, thank you for coming on this CUBE conversation. Looking forward to hosting you on the AWS Startup Showcase coming up and looking forward to second return for Thanks, your ops. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, appreciate it. Okay, I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto Studios with CUBE conversation. Talk about the future of cloud spend. This is where AI is going, the scale and the data are key and this is what what tuning up the internet is all about and cloud. I'm your host, John Furrier. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.